nothing on earth that could ever compare to that city of light. To that city of light, waiting to welcome you. And everybody should know God works great big miracles With common little things Joshua frown, but they marched and they shouted and they blew their trumpets and the walls came tumbling down. So if the Lord calling you to a nominal task, just step out on faith and do whatever He asks, cause God works great big miracles with common little things. Common little things like the fish and the bread and bread. Oh, 
Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed. That's just pure old quartet singing. Y'all had a great time tonight. Are you tired? You got to be tired. I'm wore out. I've shaved three times since I've been here this evening. But I tell you, it is a joy. I'd rather sing anywhere. Sir, where you been? Did you hear anything we just sung? Did you hear any of them songs? They were all new. You heard them? Where'd you hear them at? Did you leave the door open? You know what? I had a fella come up to me not too long ago, and he said, you know what? You boys have way too much fun to be Christians. I looked at him. I said, sir, if that bothers you, when we get to heaven, just don't get on our cloud. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but I'm so proud of these guys. Let me take just a second and introduce, I'll start with our bass player. This young man has been with our group for 20, this is his 20th year playing bass guitar for our group. We grew up together in the same house. He's a local kid, grew up right here in these mountains. He's my younger brother, Chris French. Are you glad to see Christopher?
Yeah, man, on the, on the drums has been with our group. We've got him caged up back there tonight. But I'm telling you, we couldn't do without this young fella. He joined us 10 years ago from Oceana, West Virginia. Dennis Murphy! Man, were we ever blessed when the Lord blessed us with a young man that's playing the piano. This young fellow's been with us going on two years now. He's the best I've ever heard from Brownsville, Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Stice. One more time, a Kingdom Air band. Give these guys a great big round of applause. Amen. Singing our bass part as a young fella's been with us for nine years now. And if I could sing bass, I'd want to do it the way he does it. From Coleman, Alabama, Eric Benny. This is my son. He's 12 years old. He's 28. He's not mine, but I claim him in a heartbeat. You're not going to hear any better tenors in Southern Gospel music than this young man. From Goldsboro, North Carolina, David Sutton. You know, to have a great quartet, you got to have a great bass and a great tenor, and we do. The Lord's blessed us, but you got to have somebody who sings the most important part, and that's the lead part. Nobody does it better than this old boy from Asheville, North Carolina, Arthur Rice. My name, my name's Steve French. One more time, folks, if you really enjoyed all these guys, let them all know. You want me to turn the little man loose over here?
did you really enjoy that? Gotcha. Ladies and gentlemen, do you enjoy that brand new song? You are so great to sing to. Everybody do this. Come on.
just a rug me through each day Searching for me to survive But none was on the way Then the merciful hand of Jesus Came beckoning from above The moment that I trust in Him He filled me with His love Along the way, I've been touched by His power. I've been blessed in many ways, but nothing will ever compare to the blessing I received that day. My name was added to the list of the redeemed. He lifted me out of the loneliness of sin. He lifted me. things for you. I know y'all getting tired. Y'all sit down or, or we'll take up an offer. We're, we're just going to do a couple more songs for you then we're going we're gonna to call it a night and I know you, you, you're bound to get you're getting weary and tired and but I want to feature. Uh, I tell you folks the Lord has blessed me so much with these young fellows allowed me to stand up here and sing with them and, and be a part of them and I just think they're incredible. These young men not only are great singers and great musicians, but they live every word they sing. And, uh, and I see that, and I see it every day. And um, we did, we, everybody in this room has so many things to be thankful for. There isn't a day goes by that I don't thank God that Dolly Parton's rich. <laughs> she has her own theme park, and she loves Southern gospel music. 
And the folks at Manage and Run Dollar would love it that they included every day and that they built right next to our theater. If you've never been over there, you've got to come and see it. It's the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame and Museum, folks. We would have never had it. It hadn't been for Dollywood. And I, I really appreciate that. And, and I'm so blessed with, with, with our band. These young fellas are absolutely incredible. They had never recorded an instrumental album until now. It just came out. It's brand new. And uh, guys, y'all going to do my favorite. Y'all know that old song, Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho? I, that's always been one of my favorites, and these guys are going to show off a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for them. How about it? The Kingdom Air Band, right here. heard you do it any better had you did it right then and the world's watching so you picked a good time to do it good the kingdom air band folks did you enjoy that i mean little brother even got excited he's as wound up tonight as i've seen him in months have you <laughs> I'm going to put him back on that red lid. Well, we're going to do one more song for you. 
our new album, City of Light. We're real excited about it. All these songs we sing for you is off that album. I want to leave you with one song. Many of you, through gospel music down through the years, there's been a lot of wonderful people come through our industry. A lot of wonderful people have touched my lives. Folks like Glenn Payne and Rex Nealon. Rex was one of those unique, he's always been one of my favorites. He was a unique bass singer, and the fact that he can, he had a great range to his voice. He could sing low, he could sing high. Back when he was with the Neelands, I was two or three years old. All right, I was young. He, was kind, he had a song that he was kind of known for, a song called I Love to Call. I had never heard anybody else other than Rex Nealon sing this song. When we record, started doing this new album, I asked our bass singer, Eric, to sing that song because I knew Eric is that same kind of bass singer. Incredible. He has an incredible low range. He's got a great range to his voice. And this young man is just a great, great singer. So we did this and dedicated this to Rex, and I hope y'all enjoy it. Many of you remember it. The song says, I love to call. Y'all put your hands together and make our bass singer welcome. Eric Benny.
Well, it's time to bring on some more co-hosts, and I love these two guys. You've already proven that you love one of them just, just in a few minutes ago because he was a fantastic storyteller. And joining him is another great, great gentleman. And let me introduce them to you. Steve French, who is coming out to be one of our co-hosts. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is an absolute super fellow, big as a giant. You know, I was walking by him on the way out here in sweat, and I thought it was raining. It was just coming off his brow, you know. <laughs> And uh, he, he's a big fella, and, uh, but he's also a member of the uh, National Quartet Convention Board, which is a prestigious position. He is a member and a leader and a founder of the Kingdom Heirs that sings at Dollywood. I think that's fabulous. They sing up there to thousands of people every day and travel around the country. I'm so proud of these guys. And joining him is the one and only Tim Lovelace. Only one they threw the mold away when they made him but make him welcome will you how about it for two great gentlemen tim lovelace and steve french and here they are hey how's everybody doing jerry thank you what a wonderful introduction i looked at this fellow standing beside i said who's he talking about he's talking about you big guy I got a pet. Did, <laughs> did, uh, did you not know what time we was coming out here? You didn't get to finish supper? No, What's the deal no. Here? I've, I've got a pet peeve. I've been thinking about some things. <laughs> Boy, that's a scary one, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've been on a bunch of those Gaither videos. I don't know. 20 or 30 of them, I don't know. Guess where I sit? Back row. Guess who's on the front row? Howard and Vestal. Seniority is a wonderful thing. Get, guess what this guy, see they have those big old, what do you call them, those maroon wingback kind of chairs. I can't even make it to the next to the last row. Seniority. What kind of chairs y'all have Excuse on the back row? Excuse me a minute, big guy. I'm sorry. Speaking of seniority, now we got a big fella here that's on the board at the quartet convention, Steve French. Manager of successful group, the Kingdom Airs. Travels all over the country. Hit records. I'm still a banjo picker on the back row. I'm tired of it. All of them are big, big arms. I'm gonna stop right there while I'm behind. Everybody's big with seniority. I'm scrawny, I'm gonna eat, I want a wingback chair. I'm tired of being on the back row. They put the little fellas on the back row. I'm tired of being on the back row. Big fella. See what you're gonna say next. You better think of something because I can't talk. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something. Bill Clinton's leaving office. There's nothing else to talk about. I th <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Y'all think it's funny? You shoot a corn dog up the left side of your sign and says, you're in trouble. <laughs> I want, Tim, t that's not the microphone. Well... <laughs> Guess what, folks? I got my big maroon chair now, don't I? I'm gonna keep eating next year. I'm gonna be a big boy. And Steve Prince, the manager over there, sitting on the hot box. <laughs> yeah, next year, you're gonna be a big boy. Yep, I got but my chair. Already. Next year yet. You ain't such a big boy now. Now, you've been up there talking about us big guys. 
You need to go stand in front of a mirror. I mean, look. Look at that bless its heart. I'm strong. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm strong. Are, are you really? Now, you're not putting me Tim, strong. how strong are you? Just, just tell these folks how strong you are. I'm strong. Well, how strong? I can, I can burp Tupperware all by myself. Let, let me ask you something. Are you going to be in town another day? Are you going to be here another day? <laughs> Ma'am, I'm not talking to you. That was my mama. What? I do, I've got my hands full with him. If I... <laughs> If I wanted a woman to sit and holler at me tonight, I'd have stayed at home. <laughs> I'm teasing, ma'am. Guess what? When you, when, you, when you scream loud enough, folks start to listen. Had a, had a fella walk up to me a while ago and hand me this, and this is legitimate. This is legitimate. He is so concerned about you that he has given you two one-day passes to the Family Fitness Center here in Seville. <laughs> Can you do that back shot? You know how they... they, they now don't you'll tear something up. Uh, here, they're open all night long, so you go on over there. Mr. Tally. Mr. French. It's good to see you. Thank uh, you. you. You look good. I hadn't seen you in a while. You've been gone on the road and gone a lot. And ha How you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm just a little ticked, though. I've about had it. Ticked about, about had what? I'm tired of being on the back row. <laughs> had it! Up to here! Sit down! <laughs> We're not going through that mess oh, again. Oh, no, let's, let's go there, big boy. No! Yeah, you a big boy now, uh, Mr. Board of Director. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the little peons is after you, buddy. We're eating. We'll get there one day. I've already took a bite off this one, but just remember, little, little dogs can't be choosy. <laughs> he put you up to that, didn't he? Up to what? Oh, don't act like you don't know what's going on. You watched that last night. I still every big man in the world was humiliated out here last night. I didn't watch you last night. Kirk, you did. You went up. Was you not at your mama's eating supper? Yeah. In Bulls Gap, Tennessee. I was, but I didn't watch you on TV. I know. Yes, I know your mama has a satellite dish. But she gets it a day late. <laughs> it's Bulls Gap, remember? <laughs> Now I want to know something. Why, why, see, I every time Kurt about. goes home, it takes him two days to get there. Every time he goes home, he, I get to go because his mama. <laughs> is a great cook, and she knows pork chops is my favorite. Now, how come, how come, did you bring any back? How come I didn't get No, to... she said, she told me last night, she said, don't you bring him back up here because he eat us out of house and home <laughs> the last time he was here. <laughs> You know, 
You know, they're retired now, and they got to conserve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, now, you know I think the world of Red and Corny Ethel. I mean, that's uh, Red Tally and Corny Ethel. That's Kirk's mama's name. And, and, and your daddy, he's from the mountain up there, told me a little story on Kirk. Y'all want to hear it? Yeah. Many of you know Kirk grew up in, in a... In a in Do I need a, my corn dog for this? <laughs> <laughs> I'd kind of like to get rid of this. <laughs> Tim didn't have no problem holding it all night long. Thank you. How about a big round of applause for the corn dog lady? I was talking to Red one day, and I was talking about the family, how Kirk and Roger and I, how all of you grew up in a musical family. And his dad was telling me that Kirk, he was just a little guy, and he used to have to stand him up in a chair so people could, in the back of the church could see him sing. And, and I guess that. that's true. He also told me about the first time he ever took Kirk. It's a delayed reaction. They get it in the back of it. They're from Bull's Gap. <laughs> I'll bet you the corn dog just got back I there. bet you did too. <laughs> anyway, he wanted to take, back, back in the old days, we didn't have baptistries in our churches like they do now. You know, they, they had the old-fashioned old river baptisms. Told me the first time he ever took Kirk. Tur tur first time he did what? <laughs> Carried you over to a baptism. <laughs> He said all the way over there, Kirk was a little fella, said so he was just here and there, you know, he threatened him all the way over there. Kirk, now listen, when we get over here to the river, I don't want to be in the middle of this baptism. That's a special time and, and hear something hit the water and see you go floating by. You stay up on the bank. You just stay far away from the water. Well, they got into the baptism. Kirk couldn't stand it. He, before he knew it, he was in the water up to his ankle, then, then up to his knees, and it wasn't long. He was in it all the way up to his waist, standing beside the preacher. Preacher looked down there at him and said, Well, hello, Kirk. Would you like to find Jesus today? Kirk looked at him and said, Yes, sir. Preacher just put his hand on top of his head and pushed him right under the water. <laughs> Pulled him up, and Kirk's blowing water and wiping it out of his eyes. And he looked at him. He said, How about it, Kirk? Did you find him? Kirk said, No. <laughs> put his hand back on there and pushed him back under there. Pulled him back up, and he said, How about now, Brother Kirk? Did you find Jesus? And Kirk began to weep, and he said, No. Preacher getting a little aggravated. Put both hands on him this time. Pushed him down under the water and held him a little longer till he bubbled. Bubble? Pulled him back up. Kirk was crying and walking the water, and he was spitting water, and he said, How about now, Kirk? Did you find Jesus? Kirk said, No, sir, but are you sure this is where he fell in? <laughs> Y'all remember last year he pulled his badge out on you? I, buddy, I still got it. Oh, here we go again. I didn't mean for you to, to, to flash it. There it is. It's come in handy several times. <laughs> hey, did I tell you, um, the, the, up there at the, uh, the, the, the week up there at the SGMA Awards, Gatlinburg. And Gatlinburg up on the hill. You know where they, they've stopped us from driving up the hill. Now you have to ride that little shuttle t thing up there in your tuxedo and, and, you, and, you, and you can't drive all the way up there. You have to ride the shuttle. So I was running late and uh, got to down there and the woman said, well, you'll have to park and ride that little shuttle. And I said, surely I won't. I'm late. And uh, she said, yes. Yeah. said, they're not letting anybody else park up there. And so I just whipped out the badge and I, I just did like that. And I said, I really need to be at the top of the hill. And she said, you go right ahead. <laughs> I and she wouldn't let you up there. No. I pulled up in my truck. <laughs> Jeff Stice was with me, and she looked in and said, Hey, Steve and Jeff, you boys go on up. We got you a spot up there. Just another reason that I've had it. <laughs> See, when you grow up, you don't need them badges.
Okay. Anything anything special happened on the road or? Oh, the, did I tell you about the? Uh, you didn't tell me nothing. I told you I hadn't sung. <laughs> the day after I sang with you in Kodak, uh, I, the next night I was in Sacramento, California. Did I tell you about the gift they gave me? I sang out there, and uh, when, the, when the concert was over, they, uh, they brought me back up on stage and said they had a gift for me. So I thought, cool. So they had this box all wrapped up in this pretty paper, you know. And um, so I went up to the front of the stage, and the man said, now, we're just glad to have you out here. This is your first time here, and, and we have this little gift that we'd like to give you and to show you our appreciation for coming out here. And I thought, well, great. And so I looked at the box, and it had this real pretty paper on it, but it also had <laughs> one of those uh, stick-on ribbons no it's not a real ribbon you just lay the stick on thing on there and on the stick on ribbon it said sun sweet said what sun sweet yeah i thought it was i thought the same thing so i said to the man wait a minute what did you think prunes <laughs> that's what they thought prunes yes prunes <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway, I said to the man, I said to the man, oh, you got me prunes. And he said, oh, said, no, said, we don't call them prunes out here, said they're dried plums. And before I thought, I said, yeah, but the end result's the same. <laughs> frightened as to where that was going. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a cool little fan right there. Where'd you get that? Is that just the prop over there we get as, for being hosters? <laughs> One of these lots, we are toasters, I'll just tell you. No, I think we get a box of raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't quite the same, I'll just tell you. <laughs> Well, where do you say you're from? I'm from Bulls Gap, Tennessee. That ain't where you say you're from. Anytime anybody introduces, please make him welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Talley from Knoxville, Tennessee. Well, you want to be from the big city. No. I, my office is in Knoxville. Oh, we have an office? You have one, too? In the ba basement of my house. I don't have a basement. And <laughs> Do I? You've been to my house, I don't have a basement. No, you traded it in for a pool. <laughs> Did you ever get rid of that fungus that was in that pool? No, actually, I went up there to bad. swim in it one day, and it was black. And there you was, out in it, just like I it was there. <laughs> And it give you that stuff you couldn't get rid of. No, I, I was sick. I had that side of the crud before that. You well, did? That's what, that's what we call it, the crud, yeah. The crud. Are y'all from Canada? Anybody here from Canada? Because I had it one time. I was sick in Canada and went out and... And after the third song, it was awful. I couldn't sing, hardly couldn't talk. So after the third song, I said, folks, I'm sorry, that's as good as it'll get because I've got the crud and I can't sing. Well, I noticed half of the crowd went <gasps> like that when I said that. So I just went right on with the program, you know, and at intermission, about half the audience came out to the record table and informed me that in Canada, the crud means constipation. <laughs> Here it comes. Hold it. No, no. See, I could be your booking agent because I'll bet you you went from Canada to Sacramento. <laughs> I, I knew that was coming somewhere, somehow. I knew. 
of it. <laughs> Man, what are you doing with that little flip thing there going tonight? You, know, you need a haircut. It might, no, I know I need a haircut, and it's down in my eyes. My, my spray. I wouldn't be talking about hair if I was you. Um, <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, but the back of mine flies up. <laughs> Down. <laughs> yeah, I remember that song y'all used to sing. Oh, I wanna grow hair, grow hair. <laughs> just sorry. Don't make me bring up the prunes again. <laughs> okay, now they're wanting us to quit this foolishness and introduce these people. Uh, and, oh, I've got a card somewhere. Y'all having a good time. Yeah. Y'all a good bunch. I'm you, I hope y'all have had a good week. You know, they told us, I heard tonight they were already half sold out for next year. Do what, sir? Oh, another card down there. Well, this, right here is who we're supposed to be. Sir, here. if we need any help, we'll ask. <laughs> You could have been a partner at a snake or anything. <laughs> okay. Now, we... I, I'm teasing. We have had... You, I knew you could take a joke. Anybody wear shorts like that. <laughs> I'm teasing, sir. And to show you how I'm teasing, you come by Kirk's record table and I'll give you one of his new takes. <laughs> 